In fact, I can make it a small picture, for instance. And I can have these pictures at the beginning of my newsletter. If someone wants to see this picture in a larger view, for instance, they can click it and add a hyperlink on it to link to a larger picture. And the target, for instance, can be a pop-up window. So you would have a pop-up of the larger image come up so they can view that in a larger image. Also, I could have this other picture within the document describing something so that I can click on the larger picture, add, a, add an anchor to it, and then at that point, when I want to go from the smaller picture to the larger picture in the document, all I would have to do then is bring up my hyperlink again, and this time I would link it to the anchor within the document. So there are many variations and combinations of things we can do. The next icon here will allow you to add a horizontal line. For example, if I wanted a horizontal line in here, I would hit enter so that I can have the, a line there. And I will click this to give me a horizontal line within the document. If I want to add a smiley face for some kind of enhancement, I will click on it and this will bring up the dialog box with the different smiley faces on it. For example, if I'm saying, let's go on vacation, I can bring that little smiley in. If there are some special characters that I want to add, I can click this button and insert special characters. So any of the characters in the ASCII set can be placed and you can see it larger here in this window as you scroll over the different ASCII characters. We'll cancel out there. This button will allow you to insert a page break. Since this is an HTML document, then the page breaks have very little significance, but they do add a spacing in between lines. For example, if I wanted a page break between that picture and this next section, I can click this and the page break here will be inserted. These icons along here are for editing and formatting the text. These two icons act on the entire paragraph. We'll highlight this area and we'll bring it to normal text here. We click here and we see we have this normal text. This was a link, so let's remove that link. This was a link here. We'll remove that link. Now, we've brought this text back to normal. Normal formatting here. So, let's click on it now and try to bring the style to red title. Now we see that the entire paragraph here is red title heading 3. What if you want to keep the same red title and we'll increase the heading to a heading 2. The heading 2 removed the style. We'll see here that the style will actually override the heading. So We'll go back to normal. If we wanted this heading as a heading 1, for instance, which is large size font and bold, and we would want to make it red, then we would use these icons over here, which change the 
text color and the background color. So, but these icons and boxes over here affect individual text and not the entire paragraph. First, let's go back and change the format to normal. So as long as the format is normal, change the style. So as you see, some of this you just have to play around with. I can click anywhere in there and go from style marker green to red title and incorporate both of those together. Or I can click in the paragraph and go back to normal. that's highlighting and you can't tell it's highlighting because it's in green. If I want to remove this green background off of it, I would have to highlight it. Come over here to background color. Press automatic and take that back out of the green. These two affect the font size and the the type of font for example we'll highlight this portion and if I want to change this font to to Homa or I want to change it back to Arial or even to Times New Roman when I click on it it will change the font if I wanted to have half of it be a smaller size. I will click that and go to smaller size. You notice here that the sizes don't describe point sizes or pixels. And that's because using HTML editing, there are standard size fonts that are used on the internet with browsers. And these standard fonts are the ones we would choose from here extra large for instance. When we look at the text here at the bottom we'll highlight part of it and when we click this icon here it will bring down a drop down box showing you different colors we can change the text to. Here we'll make the text red color. We'll click off of it we we'll see the red and we'll change this background with the same text to a green. We'll see once we click on it, the drop down box comes down showing you the different colors of backgrounds you can have. So when we click off of it, we see now that we have red text on a green background. Let's make it bold so that we can see it a little better. Click off and that's what we have. We hope you've really enjoyed our journey through the FCK editor. You can click on this icon here. This will open the about window for the FCK editor. This will show you the FCK editor website. It's used on many applications and it's very powerful. We've used it here on our Real Tools for Pros automated real estate marketing system. The system does automatic emails, autoresponders, and newsletters for real estate professionals. We have many newsletters and scripts, templates on our site for you to choose from. You can also go to our Real Tools for Pros tool section and see many articles and other videos on the FCK editor. There we have many tools for real estate professionals. Thank you once again and goodbye.